So I have been busy working on the control box for this for the last couple of days. And as you could probably guess by this big hole through the center here, this is gonna mount onto the rear ROPS bar of the tractor. And this gets two 70 millimeter bolts uh, that go all the way through into the back. And then there is a uh, nut captured. It's actually pressed into the plastic of the back piece. And these are the nylock nuts. Um, so these things don't work loose in the, uh, you know, while it's running and vibrating. Uh, this has, uh, it's open in the inside here. Um, and then I've got uh, two cable glands coming out of the bottom. And to wire this up, I am going to use this vinyl jacketed um, wire uh, out to the motor. I only need two conductors. I have, you know, 12 volts coming in and 12 volts going out. The polarity is just going to be reversed. And I just realized right now, um, while I was standing here, that I accidentally ordered the wrong switch. I need uh, a switch with six terminals on the back so that I can tie two together and have the switch itself reverse the polarity of the, the DC current. So I'm not gonna be able to get this all finished today, but I think I am still gonna test fit this up onto the tractor and get my wire lengths cut, uh, solder my connections on at the motor end, and I could still test this at least just turning in one direction for, uh, for today, I guess. So let me get this uh, mounted up on the tractor and I can figure out what my wire lengths are and also how I'm going to connect to a power source on the tractor to uh, power this. Oh, I forgot to mention, there is a, so there is a cover. This is not just gonna be open here. There's a cover that goes over this and then there's holes here for uh, this style screw uh, to be recessed um, so that it sits below the plastic surface of this and doesn't rub on the, the ROPS bar. And this is not gonna make a watertight seal just as it is. Um, what I might do once I have everything all finalized is just put a little bead of silicone on the inside there and then set this guy in and screw it in place. Then it would be completely, uh, the inside of this would be completely sealed other than you know any small gap at the switch. So might do that as well. Um, not sure, I don't think very much water is gonna get in there anyway. The way that it's stepped I think any water that gets behind this is gonna end up probably running down and then just coming off of this edge, or actually I've got it upside down, but same thing, um, running down and then coming off of this edge and just dripping down. But let's get this on the tractor. So what I'm trying to do is decide how I want to route the cable. Um, you get a better idea of the box here. Really pleased with how this came out. A little hard to see in this uh, the harsh overhead light here. Um, so I think I'll do this wire on this side coming out and coming down and then maybe getting zip tied uh, to the bracket for the top link. The, the blower is all the way down on the ground right now, but it will end up a little bit lower if the ground behind the tractor is lower at any point. So I want to make sure I have enough slack here so that I'm never pulling tight on this wire coming from the box. Uh, but I don't have so much slack that it's blowing around and could potentially get caught in something either. So I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to zip tie it here. And then um, in theory, I don't really need a connector here. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna put one or not because um, the box is only ever gonna be on the tractor when the blower is on. I can't think of any reason that I would wanna drop the blower but still leave the control box on the tractor. I'm not sure on that one. I might just, I might just put a connector down here as well just to make it easy to store the control box, maybe, I don't know that I'm gonna sort separate from the, the blower. I gotta think that one through. It's, uh, it's, it's not that it's expensive or hard to put a connector there, it's just every time you add a connector, you add another possibility for resistance in the connection um, in the future as the weather gets into there. So let me think about that. 
All right, so I noodled on that a bit, and I actually think I came up with a great solution. I am going to do a connector, but I'm not going to do it down here at the motor. I'm going to do the connector on this part of the wire, probably, you know, about midway down where it hangs. And I'm going to use a Dean's style connector, which is a high amperage connector that has real tight spring connections, but that if you pull on it, it will disconnect. And that's going to serve two purposes. It's going to make it so that I can just, when I'm done with this thing at the end of the season, disconnect it right there and then wrap the wire, say, around the top tube here so it just stays with the motor um, and the rest of the rotation assembly. But also, if it ever gets snagged on anything or I forget to disconnect it or something, rather than ripping something apart, uh, that connector will just pull apart here. So that's what I'm going to do, and I will key them. I'm going to do the same thing, I think, for... Um, the connection to the tractor maybe not sure i may use a, a regular sae style connector like a coupler like this one actually on the power from the tractor so that i can easily plug other stuff into it uh, whether it be um, a maintenance charger since that's going to run to the battery although it's going to be fused so maybe not um, but i could plug like a, a like a 12 volt accessory socket or something in if i wanted to run an air compressor um, but definitely going to use a Dean style connector here so that this thing, if it if it gets caught, it can pull apart. I really like the idea of that. So I'm going to start cutting my wire lengths and then probably take this down to my electronics workbench where it's easier to uh, to solder stuff. Because uh, this, this end is going to be, I'll cut these off and it'll be hard connected to the motor on this end. These bullet connectors are, I don't trust these guys at all. This, these, these are, this is the type of thing that's going to work for a couple of seasons and then you're going to get resistance here these are going to get real hot as you're running it they're going to melt it's going to make a big mess of everything i hate these things and especially in scenarios where they're going to be exposed to any weather just just in blowing snow all right i cut my wire um this is going to get zip tied here i'm going to have a little bit of a of an extra loop not a full loop but a little extra down here which will be fine the extra um won't won't get unmanageable here because this will get held with a zip tie on uh, the hole here. So I marked with just some blue tape the location of where I want that uh, connector that will disconnect if there's a lot of pressure there. And I just temporarily put two zip ties up here in place so I can see where I'm going to want that wire to to sit up here on the wraps bar. So I'm going to take this part now and go and actually... Cut the wire there, solder the two connectors on, and then wire this one up to the motor permanently. So it takes a little longer to make that type of a connection, uh, but this is not only soldered now, so it's never going to be loose. Um, each one's individually uh, heat shrunk, so it's insulated uh, inside, and then it's got an outer uh, covering on it as well, uh, so it's weather tight, um, at least up to this end. I guess water could get into uh, to there. All right, let's go ahead and get the coupler wired in.
Okay, so now we have our connector here. And this is a high amperage connector that was actually originally designed, I think, for RC cars. Um, handles quite a bit of amperage. It's spring-loaded, so it stays together. It's not gonna come apart on its own. But if we pull hard from either side, actually not even that hard, honestly. Um, if I had to estimate, that's maybe, I'm gonna say about five pounds of force. Uh, that guy will separate. And it's a little hard to see here, but these guys, the springs are on the terminals uh, themselves on the mill side. So there's a piece of metal there that essentially gets flattened out as it goes into the, the female socket. And whenever you're using these guys, uh, since this side is exposed, this is always your, your load side. So this is going to be going to the motor because if this is unplugged, this is safe. If this taps against something metal, it's not going to short out because the motor is not going to provide any power. This is the side that's going to be coming from the control box. So if this disconnects, it's now safe. Sure, we could stick something in there just like you could stick something in a 110 volt outlet on the wall. Um, but it's it's not just it contacting something metal is not going to short out. Okay, so what I ended up doing was just zip tying this so I have a nice drip loop here. That way, any water that collects on here will drip off from the bottom rather than trying to go into the terminals on the motor um, or running up inside this wire. Um, there's my disconnect coupler and um, zip ties here. These could also be uh, like those uh, sort of bungee cord ball hook things, or not ball hooks, but the the short cords, the short double cords in the loop with the, the ball on the end, uh, that would be reusable um, rather than just putting a new zip tie on every year. Um, and then this guy, so we're tight here, so it's not going to pull the connection at the motor. Um, if we pull on this wire now, it'll disconnect. Well, it's actually pulling through my zip ties because we're not really tight up here, but it will disconnect right there. I think that's about as far as I can go until I get the correct switch for that box. All right, I bent the uh, bent the spade lugs here a little bit and then just bent these guys on the switch just a little bit and I have more than enough clearance, probably a little hard to see, but I am about two millimeters below the surface of this plate without even it pushing on it. So that's good to go. Um, see, doesn't hit at all. Uh, before I put the screws in and everything, it makes sense to plug this thing into the tractor and see if that is the correct polarity or if I need to swap those spades around uh, to get it to rotate in the direction I want based on um, whether I'm pushing the sky up or down. So it is wet, dark, and cold outside, so sounds like a perfect time to go try this. All right, you'll have to excuse the sound of the generator running. I don't have electricity up here in my barn, so to run the lights, I gotta run a generator. Um, I've got uh, one end plugged into the motor, I'll plug the other end into the tractor. I don't have it mounted yet. Uh, this is a test to see if uh, by dumb luck it's going to go the direction I want depending on the way I push it and if it or I should say or if it works at all. So let's see here. I want it to go counterclockwise if I push up. All right luck is on my side today and we'll come back. Yes. Ooh, that is satisfying. All right, all right, stop playing with it, right? Let's get this mounted up on the ROPS and I'll show you what it looks like. All done. Well, guys, I'm going to resist the urge to call it done until it actually snows and I can test it. But uh, I am pretty pleased with this. Everything is installed, ready to go. There's my power connection to the tractor. 
I ended up, by the way, just uh, running a lead all the way back from the um, the starter solenoid um, 16 gauge wire back to one of these standard um, connectors. Uh, it's useful for this. It'll also be useful for um, potentially plugging in an air compressor or even a phone charger, um, you know, whatever else. Uh, this follows this, this wire loom back, goes under the seat, underneath the tunnel here. And a little hard to see. Yeah, it's like pretty much impossible to see with the lighting in here. Um, it comes out through the firewall and uh, is fused right here. And I have a 10 amp fuse in there now. Um, I could put a lower amp fuse in just for this motor, but figured in case I'm using it for something else, it'd be nice to have 10 amps on that line. So let's get up here and give it a test. Oh yeah. Yeah, so even with gloves on, that guy's gonna be super easy to push. I can pretty much just, you know, hit the top or the bottom of the whole switch. So that actually is a rubberized uh, coating on it. That guy is doing exactly what it's supposed to. I can't wait for snow.